beautiful day. It is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and we will be glad in it. So let me invite you to stand with me at this time. As I acknowledge those of you both in the sanctuary and those of us, those of you who are viewing us online or you're listening to us via NBC Radio 705. We are Glad Tidings Tabernacle, a member church of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies. And we are pastored by the General Bishop of the Fellowship, Bishop Sonny E. Williams. Let's just give God praise at this time. Let's just give him thanks as we reflect on the week, as we reflect on all that we have been through, as we reflect on the goodness of God in the land of the living, in your own way and in your own words. Let's just express praise unto God. Thanks unto God. Honor and glory and majesty unto the King of kings and unto the Lord of lords. Father, we bless you. Father, we praise you. Father, we honor you. We give you praise. We give you glory. Hallelujah. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be exalted. There is none like unto you, God. There is none like unto our God. How great and how marvelous is our God. We lift you up this morning, God. We bless you this morning, God. We worship you, God. You are great. 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 Hallelujah. And worthy to be exalted. Worthy to be lifted up. We bless you. Let's just raise a chorus of praise. We bless you, God. We bless you, God. We bless you, God. We bless you. Hallelujah. Thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. And thine is the glory. We lift you up, God. We say that you are king of kings and that you are Lord of lords. Hallelujah. You are the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. You are Alpha and Omega. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. You are worthy to be lifted up. You are worthy to be praised. We exalt you this morning, God. We exalt you, God. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Blessed is your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. We bless you, we bless you, we bless you, God. Hallelujah, we bless you, God. We bless you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be his wonderful name. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be his matchless name. Hallelujah. We exalt him this morning in the sanctuary. We lift him up this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We invite at this time Pastor Cain to do our opening prayer. Hallelujah. 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 Oh Lord, we praise your name this morning. We lift up your name this morning. Who is like unto you? God above all gods, there is none like unto you this morning. And so Father God, we lift this service before you, God, as we celebrate Students' Recognition Day. God, we bring, oh God, Father, in the name of Jesus, every component of this business before you, every part of this, this service before you. Father, we lift, oh God, the word that will be transmitted to the airways today. To the hearts of your people today, God. We pray for a safe passage, oh God. And that it will touch the hearts of your people. For those who are not saved, God, we pray, God, it will bring salvation to them, Lord. Wherever they are, God, in the name of Jesus, whatever position they are facing today, 
your world will bring to them oh god a new beginning a new start a new era in their very lives oh god in the name of jesus father we come against and we pull on every high thing that would want to exalt itself above the knowledge of the most high god we oh god pray this morning that every principalities and powers oh god that will want to fight that will want to disturb that will want to trouble oh god every part of this um transmitting frequency and signal that will be sent out to the world oh god even the worldwide web we pray heavenly father god that it will go forth oh god and it will not return void that word today in the name of jesus we bring every student before you today, God. We pray that their hearts will be challenged after they would have left this service in the name of Jesus. God, we bring every other person that will come to this assembly this morning. Oh God, even the visitors. Oh God, even us as, as members of this church. We, we lift every part of it before you, Father. We pray for the sick this morning. We pray as they hear the word, oh God. They will be healed. They will be delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for your presence here this morning. Oh God, a rich presence. A presence, oh God, that will change, oh God. Lives, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And the situation, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, oh God, as we lift our voices to you, oh God, this morning in praise and worship, oh God. Our worship will go up before you as a sweet-smelling Savior. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Turn around and just give a wave to someone as you take your seat for a short while. I want to again welcome you to God's house. Those of you who are in the sanctuary, you have done well to be here. Give yourselves a round of applause for coming into the house of the Lord today. And do we have anyone visiting us for the very first time? No first-timers. Welcome, welcome all. It's celebration time and we like to recognize those who are celebrating. Life is a beautiful thing and we thank God every day for it. So if you're celebrating a birthday from today on to Saturday, can I see by uh, indication of your hand or standing for me? Yes, when is yours? Um, tomorrow. Starry, for when is yours? Thursday and Tuesday. Hap and yours is today? On Friday. Happy birthday when it comes. And we trust that you will have one more year of God's blessings. What about a wedding anniversary? Anybody celebrating this week? You were married this time some years ago. No one celebrating. I don't know if we have any September weddings. But we thank God for being with us. We thank God for keeping us through another week. Let's stand again as I again welcome those of you joining us on Radio 705 as well as online. I trust that today... You will meet with God and he would answer your questions. And those of you who are celebrating this week, we also pray that you would have a great and blessed day. This is our family month and as we think of the goodness of God and our families, we just want to give him thanks this morning. You can remember all he has brought you through, all he has helped your family through. Isn't he a good God? Amen. Isn't he a great God? Amen. So we are going to sing praises unto him today. Hallelujah. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Hallelujah. Praises unto God, sing praises. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Sing praises unto God, sing praises. Hallelujah. Oh God is our King over all the earth. Sing praises unto Him with understanding. So clap your hands. Praise, to be praised. 
Hallelujah, we sing with understanding because we know who we serve. The understanding that despite our situations, we can sing praises unto God. And we speak his name this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we speak the name of Jesus over all our situation this morning. Hallelujah. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope
be strong Shine through the shadow in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus shout Jesus from the mountain shout Jesus from the mountain Jesus in the streets Jesus in the dark for every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Yeah. 
Way maker, way maker, miracle. 
he is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 As we prepare to worship God with our tithes and offerings, I'll call our pastor, Bishop Williams, at this time. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Offering time, giving time, is a moment where we express our love for God and we exercise our faith in God. I ask you at this time, as you have prepared your gifts to give to God, if you have it in your purse or your pocket or wherever you have, just take it out. And as we look to God for his blessings on every giver here this morning, I declare upon you the blessings that are outlined in, the, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8 to 11. And God is able to make every grace overflow to you, the givers today, so that in every way, always having everything you need, you may excel in every good work. As it is written, he distributed freely. He gave to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now the one who provides seed for the sower and bread for food will also provide and multiply your seed and increase your harvest of your righteousness. You will, you will, every giver, you will, in Jesus' name, will be enriched in every way for your generosity, which provides thanksgiving to God through us. I make this declaration as we now give to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And indeed, we have to plead the blood of our families. Because it's the blood that keeps us safe and protected. Amen. If it wasn't for the blood, who knows where it would have been. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus over your family. Plead the blood over your family. This is what to pray and say in the morning. The blood of Jesus over your family. Plead the blood over your family. This is what to pray and say in the morning. The blood of Jesus over your family. Plead the blood over your family. This is what to pray and say in the morning. Blood of Jesus over your family. Bleed the blood over your family. This is what to pray and say in the morning. Warfare time when you're under the blood. Them demons the shake and triple. Satan is a old of the thief, so we mash up your plans with only one sprinkle. If you're feeling pain, the blood of Jesus break every chain, break every chain and me move and stay. Declare this again and again. The blood of Jesus over your family, bleed the blood over your family. This is what to pray and say in the morning. The blood of Jesus over your family, bleed the blood over your family. This is what to pray and say in the morning. When the fix and the bush can fix it. The blood of Jesus will move our sickness. All asthma and all arthritis. In the name of Jesus, we bind it. Jesus is the answer. The blood of Jesus beat off the cancer. 
Let me chain and we move and stay Declare this again and again Be the blood of Jesus over your family Be the blood over your family This is what to pray and say in the morning Be the blood of Jesus over your family Be the blood over your family This is what to pray and say in the morning When we plead the blood Principalities get trampled when we plead the blood generation curse get dismantled so cover your children and them your unsafe family members and them christ died on the cross for all of them so stop praying for them the blood of jesus over your family plead the blood over your family this is what to pray and say in the morning the blood of jesus over your family plead the blood over your family this to pray and say in the morning when you plead the blood principalities get trampled when you plead the blood generation curse get dismantled so cover your children and them your unsafe family members and them christ died on the cross for all of them so stop praying for them the blood of jesus over your family plead the blood over your family this what to pray and say in the morning the blood of jesus over your family the blood of your family this is what to pray and say in the morning the blood of jesus over your family the blood of your family this is what to pray and say in the morning Good morning, everyone. Heavenly Father, this morning we give you thanks and we give you praise. We bless your name, O oh God, that the blood of Jesus Christ is still available to cleanse men from sin. Sinners could plunge beneath that flood and lose all their guilty stain. Our Father, in your conversation with Nicodemus, you said that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to save but that all men through him might be saved. God sent not his son to condemn but all who believe in him shall be saved. Lord, in your dialogue with Zacchaeus, you said for the son of man has come to seek and to save those who are lost. This was your mandate. This is your mandate. This was your assignment. It is your assignment, O oh God. Lord, that you come to seek and to save sinners. We are thankful this morning that if any sinner would confess their sins, you are faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse from all unrighteousness. We are thankful this morning Oh God, that you're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And so this morning we pray that by the power of the Holy Ghost, you will arrest men and women for your kingdom. Lord, they are everywhere. Father, we remember as you begin your journey here on earth, you went and you found the fisherman. And you said, come unto me, I will make you fishers of men. Lord, you met tax collector and you called them. 
And so, O oh God, we pray that even we know that you are still calling men and women. They are at the junctions. They are in our homes. They are on our workplace. Lord, they are even in the church. I pray that they will cry out to you this morning. And you promise that you will have mercy and will abundantly pardon. What must I do to be saved was the greatest question that was asked by the jailer. As he was confronted face to face with reality and he received the greatest answer that was ever given believe on the lord jesus christ and thou shalt be saved i pray this morning that you would find believers everywhere across this nation across the airways wherever they are who would be willing to confess that they are lost and dying without christ in their lives and they would acknowledge that only jesus christ alone could save Lord, this morning we thank you that you are a savior. But Lord, tomorrow you could meet many as a judge. So we pray this morning that they would cry out from the bottom of their hearts. That they would cry out. Lord, and we know that there is no one who has ever come in contact with Jesus Christ. And remains the same. I think of that woman who was at that well. When she met you or when you met her, Father, she went crying, come see a man. Who would have told me everything? God, I thank you for my life. 48, 47 years ago, you found me in a gutter in Georgie Valley. You snatched me, oh God, and you make something beautiful out of my life. And I'm thankful this morning that you have saved me. You have saved my family. And I know that it is no secret what you can do. What you have done for me, Lord, you can do for many others. If they would cry out from the bottom of their hearts, have mercy. Up at me, O oh God. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ for families. I pray this morning, O oh God, that they would look to you. That they would lift up their eyes unto the hills from whence come up their help. That they would trust in you with all of their hearts and don't lean unto their own understanding. But in every way, in every area, in every avenue, Lord, they would trust you this morning. God, we thank you, Father. We thank you that you are still in the saving business. We are thankful that you still save, you keep, and you satisfy. We are thankful this morning, our oh God, that as men cry out to you, Lord. Lord, you can save, you will save. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please have your seats at this time as I invite Brother Fenton, Harry, and team to minister to us in song. Praise God. He is our foundation today. The rock that is unshakable. We thank God for the blood. Hallelujah. And if you are wise today, you will build your house upon the rock. For when the rain falls and the wind blows, your anchor will hold. Amen. Christ is my firm foundation The rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaken I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus He has never let me down faithful through generations so I would he fail now he won't no he won't he won't he won't he won't Yeah. 
somebody lift your voice and say, Christ is my firm foundation. Oh, yes, he is. Christ is my firm foundation. Anybody know that he's faithful? Anybody know that he's faithful? 
Everybody know that he's faithful. Everybody know that he's faithful. Oh, because rain came. Bishop of the house, Bishop Sonny Williams, will be coming to bring the, the word at this time. And just before he takes the mic, Sister Sandra Robertson will be coming to do the reading, which is taken from Psalm 127. Psalm 127, as we stand for the reading. And right after me, the voice you'll hear is that of Bishop Williams. Good morning to the body of Christ and also to our extended audience. Can we please join me in standing for the reading, Psalms 127. Except the Lord build the house, the labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city the watchman wake it but in vain it is vain for you to rise up early to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrows for so he giveth his beloved sleep lo children are an heritage of the lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man so are children of the youth Happy is the man that has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. The word of the Lord. Amen. You may have your seats and good morning everybody. And uh, our extended uh, audience. which is usually extended, but further with the live connection with NBC Radio this morning. So we welcome you across the nation and uh, around the world. Let us pray. God, we celebrate your, your goodness. You're a good God. God is a good God. God is a good God. And we praise you, O oh Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. We pray for understanding. The spirit of understanding and revelation. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. So from Psalm 127. And I draw this morning a theme from the song that was so beautifully done by the team that is led by Brother Fenton. John. And there is a little clause in the, in the song that says, my house was built on you. My house was built on you. You see, while, when I was in grade K, Back then, that was ABC. We did a number of nursery rhymes. And there is a nursery rhyme that I want to use this morning. There was a mother pig who had three little pigs. 
And she did not have enough to keep them, so she sent them out to seek their fortune. The first little pig had not gone far when he met, when he met a man with a bundle of straw. The little pig said to him, please, man, give me the straw to build a house. This man did. And soon the little pig built a house with it. Just after the house was built, along came a wolf. He knocked at the door of the little pig's house and called, little pig, little pig, let me in. And the little pig answered, no, 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 by the hair of my chinny chin chin. And then the wolf huffed and puffed and blew the house in. And then he ate the little pig. The second pig had not gone far when he met a man carrying a bundle of sticks on his shoulder. The little pig said to him, please man, give me those sticks to build me a house. This man did, and soon the little pig built a house with them. Just after the house was built, along came the same wolf. And he knocked at the door of the little pig's house and said, Little pig, little pig, let me in. But the little pig answered, No, 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 by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then the wolf said, I will huff and I will puff and I will blow your house in. So he huffed and he puffed and he blew the house in and that eat that little pig up. The third little pig met a man with a load of bricks. Little pig said to him, please man, give me those bricks to build me a house. This the man did, and soon the little pig built a house with them. Just after the house was built, along came the same wolf. And he knocked at the little pig's house and said, little pig, little pig, let me in. But the little pig answered, no, no, no. By the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then the wolf said, I will huff and I will puff and I will blow your house in. So the wolf huffed and he puffed. And he huffed, and he puffed, and he puffed, and he huffed, and he huffed, till he could blow the third pig house no more. The little pig house stood because it was built with bricks. And the, the wolf decided... Well, I will come down your chimney. The little pig put a pot of hot water on the fire and boiled it. And when the wolf came down, he opened the lid and the wolf fell right into the pot and cooked. And the little pig had him for supper. School days were happy, happy days. The pig house stood because it was built <laughs> with bricks. And our reading this morning talks about that. About the foundation of our home and of our nation. And you notice that there is a there is an there is an emphasis in the in the chapter of Psalm 127. And there is an emphatic repetition of the phrase. Unless 
unless the Lord build a house. And we know that God is not going to use hammer and nails to literally build a house. Nor is he going to hold weapons that he might literally guard the city. He must be the very foundation upon which a house is built before that house can stand. Christ is, in the word of the song, my firm foundation. In him I stand. The foundation must be Christ. The foundation of a family, of a home, of a nation must be Christ for it to stand. He must be the the unseen God of the city. We must trust in Christ completely for us to be protected. And I'm not talking about, about a trust that it is about mere words, platitude, mere talk. Mere having a form of godliness embracing the external of our religious experience and not having the substance, the obedience, the embrace of Jesus Christ as head, as master, as sovereign Lord, that Jesus is functioning as Lord of the family and of the nation. Until, unless the Lord builds, family life will be in trouble. A nation will be in trouble. Because families are the, the building block of our nation. And any nation is as strong as its families. When family life are weak, nations are weak until, until God builds, then families are without foundation. They will be blown away by every wind. They will shift by every shaking and you will be away that nations today are being shaken. And the word says that which, is, that which can be shaken will be shaken. It is only Christ. And Christ alone is unshakable, unconquerable. Hallelujah. On Christ, the song says, the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand. All other without this foundation will buckle, will fail. My friends, our home is as strong as its foundation. And we note that in the, in the psalm, verse 1, twice. It says, in vain, in vain. And we must pay attention to the, the Hebrew sentence and the structure of the sentence. And you notice that the, the clause begins with, in vain, in vain. It's the beginning of the clause. And it emphasizes the emptiness 
without the foundation. Note what it says. In vain, they labor to build it. In vain, the watchman wakes. In vain. My friends, you know what in vain means? It means after we work, we strive, we fret, we plan, we strain. But without God, we come up with nothing. Nothing. Amen. Nothing. If Christ is not the very foundation, in vain. In vain. You will work and you will labor. In vain. We will try everything to secure the nation. But it will not work. Amen. It will not work. It cannot work. Outside of Christ. It's going to be futile. Pay attention. To the psalm. Psalm 127. And we notice that the psalm speaks of some competitors. Your work and your family. You notice the psalm went on to talk about making a living. It talks about in vain. We rise up for the morning. And we go to bed way after whatever. And then we eat the bread of sorrow. For it is God who gives his beloved sleep. So the psalm is talking about Two important areas, work and family. And note there, please, please note that, that neither of these endeavors are considered improper. Family and work are important. Building a house. And seeking the security of a nation are both acceptable enterprises. Very, very important. For security has always been important to any nation. And in the Bible, security was taken very seriously. Cities were secured by wall city, thick walls. Some of these walls were like 40 feet wide. They could allow the passage of a chariot up there where Guards were stationed day and night. So security is an important task for any nation. But note what it says. Except your security force will, will wake and do their work in vain. Amen. Amen. In vain, the police will work hard. Amen. And we will, we will continue to add strategies after strategies. And, and, and I'm not saying that we are not to because I, I am establishing that security is important. And we must do something. We have to do something. 
But if that nation isn't founded on Jesus Christ, no black squad, no SSU, no mobile police station, no whatever will stop the tides of wickedness in our nation. For except God, amen, except Jehovah is at the foundation of St. Vincent and the Grenadine, every security strategy will be in vain. Amen. Amen. God said it. His word is yea and amen. You see, guns could kill. But guns can't change hearts. Because the Bible says the hearts of men are what? Desperately wicked. And it says, who can know the heart? But God said, I, the God, the God above all other gods, the I am that I am, the God who keeps Israel. It says, he slumber, no sleeper. God watches man. God sees. God knows. When a nation ignores that God, they're in trouble. They are in trouble. St. Vincent, when you ignore God, we are in trouble. We are in trouble because the watchmen would wake in vain. The heart of man will find ways of getting around whatever. I gotta go back to God, St. Vincent. Amen. Get back to God. Amen. Go back to God. Go back to the God of our fathers. Go back to the God of the world. There is so much platitude in our nation. You, and, and here we are so, we are so tricked to believe. You, we, could, we could always take up the Bible. You could take up the Bible and make ten signs of the cross. And you could always subscribe that a chapter a day keeps the devil away. Amen. The devil not afraid of the, of the book Meaning, meaning, the print, paper and ink. What he's afraid of is when that word is in our hearts. When that word is lived out, man. That word become quick and powerful, man. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Except the Lord keeps the city. They're going to wake in vain. And I wake in vain, my brothers and sisters. And I wake in vain. So he's driving. He's saying to us, parents, don't make family and work to be compet competitors. God never intended the work that we do should compete with our families. Too much work <laughs> is counterproductive. It says it's a vain for you to rise up, to rise up before morning. Work all day. Work all evening. And then you can't sleep because you overwork. The Greeks 
had a motto that says, you will break the bow if you keep it always bent. You can't bend the bow 24-7. You're going to break it. People, you can't work, 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 work. It's going to kill you. You see, the context of Psalm 127 is not promoting laziness. Certainly not. But it deals with the person who seems to not able to stop work. It's like a workaholic. So it is addressing our workaholic behavior and showing that that kind of attitude is counterproductive. Now all of us, all of us have our occasion all have our occasion when we will burn the midnight oil. That's in order. All of us, occasionally, we are called upon to work hard. And sometimes we work and we work. And we, we say we burn the midnight oil. And, and we saw that. We see that in the book of Proverbs 31, the virtuous woman is praised because she burns the midnight oil. Every now and again, you've got to, you've got to test the limit. You've got to work hard. But that is occasionally... The workaholic, this is his pattern. This is the workaholic pattern. He burns the midnight oil every night. Every night. But those of you who, who did studies, especially higher learning, would know that to succeed... You've got to burn the midnight oil. Thank God. But thank God, you could do it because you will say, and this too shall pass. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you, you, you beat the thing because you know, hey, sooner or later, three years or two years, this is going to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. But there are some of us who don't know when to quit. We don't know when to quit. We work, we work, we work, we work. There is no time for God. Absolutely no time for God. And listen, I am seeing a pattern, a pattern in and out of the church that, listen, many of us eh, have no time for God. The very God who wakes us. The very God whose breath we breathe. The very God who gives us energy. But we believe we must work and work and work. You see, the psalmist is making an, in, an important principle, an important point. And he said, listen, prolonging our labor in vain is vain because it violates spiritual principles. And the spiritual principle is God gives to those who have learned to rest in him. Not to those who strive in their own strength. Rest. 
there must be a rhythm between work and rest. Even machines have to rest them. Them generator down Kane Hall. You normally hear them every, every day, no so? I am in Fountain, I hear them. If once, it, once it's quiet, I hear them going. But even them, there are some times, they got to shut them down and service them. Or else, they will break down. And some of us don't know that. Your body is not a machine. And even machine, the rest them. So I love, I, I, I love um, the, the New American Standard Version of verse 2 of Proverbs 127 that says, It is vain for you to rise up early. To retire late. To eat the bread of painful labor. For he gives his beloved even in his sleep. Amen. He gives to his beloved even in his sleep. I don't know. I don't know about you in your work. But I know that sometimes in your work, you come up with some problem, some, some, some issue that you can't solve in your work. And it could be very stressful. You just can't figure out how this thing works. And you leave it. That's the end of the day. You leave that. You leave that right there. And you go away from your work and you utter a prayer. You utter a prayer and you say, God, I commit this, this puzzle in your hands. I leave this work in your hands. And I know, I know sometimes you in your sleep, God gives you a revelation. Amen. God gives you a solution to the problem because even in your sleep, God takes care of your work. Amen. If you want to solve it yourself, then stay with it. Work, 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 and you will labor. On it, and you shall die. Because it ain't make no sense. You trying to make a living, and you kill yourself. Who you think is going to spend the living? Well, the proverbs, the the, the wise man said, you know. You don't even know after you're gone who will come after and go on to Maui with your insurance money. <laughs> you better take some now and go fly go Maui. Because somebody else go fly with it. Amen. It doesn't make, it doesn't make good sense when we work we work, we work, and there is no room. You see, revelation comes out of rest. Amen. Our creative power is sharpened when we rest. When we spend the time refreshing, recuperating. We are at our best. We are at our best. God is the one. God is the one who blesses. And Proverbs 10 and 22 says, It is the Lord's blessings that make you wealthy. 
or you thought was just your work and your brain power. Uh -uh. Something more than that. Work is good. And the Bible encourages work and, 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 and speak against laziness. And it says, hard work can make you no richer. Can make you no richer. If God takes away his blessings from you, what is next? What is next, my friends? If God should, should only take away, then read, read the wise man that it says, it is God who gives us the work. It is God who gives us the days. It is God who gives us the ability to enjoy the fruit of our work. You realize, you really realize that after, after you work many, many, many years, and now you have all the money to sit down and, and order, could, could I have lobster there? Could I have that there? You really realize <laughs> you can't eat it. They say, <laughs> they say no more sugar for you, <laughs> no more salt for you. No more oil for you. Oh my God. She said, what do I eat? <laughs> it is God. It is God. People, it is God. It is God. Not you. Not your smartness. Not your much laboring. It is God. It is the blessings of God. It is God. If God blesses you. Is the blessings of God. You see, one of the things that we have to be careful of is that we have to always be careful of our motives. The say is that we must build a house. But you and I know that we've got to watch the motive. Because if we have the wrong motive, wrong motive can, can have people working their life away. Why? They want to be like their neighbor. Well, your house bigger than mine. You can see, I will make my house bigger than yours. Oh, you drive that? You drive that kind of car? You're going to see just now, I will drive one better than that. What's your motive? What's your motive? Motive can run us bankrupt. Run us our nerves to nothing. Run us sick. Watch the motive. Nothing wrong with building a house. And if your motive be pure and you could afford, build the best one. Build the best one. Yes, you're going to only live in it for a time. But enjoy it while you live. And when you're gone, your children then go get a good one to live in. So nothing wrong. That's the point of the psalmist. Nothing wrong with building the house. But we must build a house on the Lord. You can't build your house on covetousness. You can't build a house on envy. You can't build a house on dishonesty. It doesn't work. It can't work. It can't work. And then, the psalmist, speaking of how God, it is God who will bless. Look how he, say, he finishes. He says, children are gifts from God. And it is in the, it is in the same light that he's, he's, he's arguing from, you know. It is not your effort. It is from God. It is God's provision. And God did not provide children because you toil for them. You see, when we work, then we are paid a wage, not a gift. End of the month, your boss ain't going to give you the gift. You work for that. You earn that. That's your wage. But note that it says, children 
are not a wage. You don't, none of us even deserve children. Children are gifts. Hallelujah, gifts. Gifts. Children come by God's grace. Count yourself to be blessed because God chose to give you children. Amen. God in his gracious provision give you children. And here because God was so gracious to you. Don't make your work compete with building your, your family. Don't neglect the gifts that God has given to you because of your laboring. You must work for the children and not make work work against your children. For if you neglect them, all that you're working for, who will get it? When they go astray and they never learn how to manage and to use money right, soon as you're dead, they blow it off. Children are gifts from God. Take care of them. Make sure that there is a balance between work and family. Make sure that you do that. They are gifts from God. And the psalmist ended on a positive note. It says, How blessed is the man whose quiver is full. They will not be ashamed when they speak to their enemies in the gates. When you invest in your family, you are actually investing in your future, in your welfare, in your security. Good children will never leave you to suffer. I say good children, eh? Good children. They will speak with the enemy in the gates. Remember that the city gates back then was a place of business. It was a place where justice, it was like courthouse. It was like parliament where justice is administered. And listen to me, when you invest in your children, your children one day will speak to your enemies in the gates. Amen. You see, when this was written, because men were breadwinners, then widows, widows were vulnerable people. Widows were in great need of protection when a husband was gone. But the psalmist says that your children are going to speak to the enemy in the gates. They will be the marketplace people, man. They will be in the business sector. They will be in the executive of government. They will be in the judiciary. They will speak to your enemy, man. Speak to your enemy. When you become old and feeble and can't make it, man, good children will be there for you. Good children will not leave you to see poverty. Good children will protect you from those evil, greedy, sometimes lawyers who plunder the poor, who rip off those who are vulnerable. Your children will speak to them in the gates. Some of your children will be gifted. They will have power of creativity. Some of your children will go in medicine and will speak to your diseases. Some of your children will find answers in farming. They will speak to the pests that destroy your farm. They will speak to your, your enemies in the gates. A 
except God. Hallelujah. Except God builds every parent is building on sun. You are building out of trash. Wolves will blow them away. Bill on Christ. Bill on Christ. Bill on Christ. Bill on Christ. Hallelujah. Bill on Christ. Bill on a firm foundation that time will not remove. Father, thank you for this word. We ask God that this word would have traveled a wave, would have lodged on good soil. And we ask, Father, for a hundred folds in Jesus' name. Christ is my firm foundation. He's the rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaken, I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. Faithful through generations. So I would he fail now. He won't. Oh, he won't. He won't, he won't, he won't. He will never fail. He has never failed us. I still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. And I won't be I going you to stand. under. You're going to worship in this song this morning. I'm not held yeah. by my own strength. Because I've been my life on Jesus. Jesus.
ourselves and we have failed oh God we repent we repent this morning we repent in the name of Jesus Christ and we ask for your cleansing cleansing by your power and by your spirit oh God do the work for us do what we can't do for ourselves. We acknowledge you that you are the God over St. Vincent and the Grenadines, oh God. You are head of state, head of government, head of the police, head of every ministry, Lord. You are head. Do the work, God. In the name of Jesus Christ. So we thank you. If those of you who join us today via radio, Thank you. And may God bless you. We bless this nation. We bless it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we commit it into your hands. In Jesus' name. He won't. this morning without Christ your life is built on sand and on water and anything can move you as we do that song again and you need to acknowledge Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior and you want to give over your life and build that life on this solid foundation you could join me down here Oh 
come on, sing it one more time. He won't, he won't, he will never fail us. He won't fail, he won't fail, he won't. Oh yes, we are, we are still waiting on those to build on this solid foundation. Build your life, build your family, build your business. Whatever you do, whatever is a human enterprise. If the foundation is not built on Christ, when the shaking comes, it's not going to stand. You need us to pray for you. Raise your hand. Step forward. We would pray for you. While you still remain standing, this is the third Sunday. And each third Sunday, we ask all of us to give something more, something to our the new building for those of you who are visiting the new building that is under construction in Daphne Flat that will become home for this church that we call that will be Glad Tidings Tabernacle Vision Center and in the same way I ask you this morning for those of you who brought that offering Just take it up. You brought it to the Lord. Take it out. And God is able, able, more than able, more than able, and says, and God is able to make every grace overflow to you, overflow to you. When you gave as an expression of your love and as an exercise of your faith, so that in every way, always, always having everything that you need, what a life to live, you may excel in every good work. For it is written, He distributed freely. To give to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now the one who provides seed for the sower and bread for food will also provide and multiply the seed that you are about to give and increase your harvest of righteousness. There is a harvest in the offering that you will put in that basket this morning. You will be enriched in every way for all generosity which produce thanksgiving to God through us. Amen. So, the baskets are here and you can come now and give towards our vision center.
Christ is my firm foundation. Because Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I stand when everything around. rough sometimes but he still is there to be dedicated so I'm going to ask the, the parents of the baby and the godparents please to come children. We go big on the dedication of children. Children says the psalm like arrows in the hands of a, of a warrior. Arrows. That's your arrow. And the Bible calls you a warrior. So are the children of your youth. For you care that boy. He will speak to your enemies in the gate one of these days. So we pray God's blessings on, on, on both of you as you will assume the responsibility to, to bring up this arrow point him in the way he should go. We want, it, we want both of you to make some pledges before this altar here this morning. In the sight of God and in the presence of these witnesses, do you solemnly undertake to bring up your child in the fear and admonition of the Lord? If so, we do. Do you promise to lead your child early to accept Christ as his Lord and Savior? If so, we do. Do you promise to set before your child a godly example? Amen. And uh, for the rest of you standing here, you are saying that we stand with you to make sure that this arrow hits the target. That's what God parents are all about. Not just a gift, 
after Christmas or whatever. I mean, that's acceptable. But it's to assist them in ensuring that this boy will go right. Father, we thank you for your grace. Grace, grace, grace. Wonderful are your works, O oh God. For God, in the darkness of the womb, you knitted this being together. He's fearful and wonderfully made. Great are your handiwork. God, before he was formed, you saw him. You knew him. And God, he's here for a purpose. We release that purpose now in the earth, O oh God. And we ask you, Father, that you will allow the circumstances of this child's life to bring him to his destiny. We pray especially for his parents today. Touch their hands. Touch their hands, O oh Lord. And you're going to make their hands, hands that will bless. Hands that will heal. Mouths that will speak blessings over his life. Will affirm compliment, will appreciate. Thank you. We release blessings over your life, O oh God. We pray, Father, for his optimal development in body, in spirit and soul, that he will grow, grow physically well, socially adjusted, and God spiritually alert. We praise your God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Ryan. Roderick Jr. We anoint you with oil as a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And we dedicate you now unto God in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We love mics. service this morning. Very good. All right, so let me thank everybody for being here this morning. You had to adjust on your time, but we, we, are, we are grateful that you have made it. And what a wonderful time we had together in God's house. Amen. Amen. And uh, I'm going to call now very quickly our secretary with the announcements, and then we are going to be leaving. Morning, church. Please listen to the announcements. The Belay Outlaw Sunday School will meet this afternoon from 3 to 4 p.m. at the Plato's residence in Belay. Tomorrow, Boys Club will meet at the Daphne Community Center at 4.30 p.m. On Wednesday, School of Prayer and Christian Enrichment will be held from 7 p.m. And our Bible study for Family Month will continue on the topic, Raising Sons. We encourage all of you to come out. 
please know that our married couples evening dub under the sheets two under the theme keep the fire of intimacy burning will be held this friday september 22nd 2023 at 8 p.m via zoom the link will be sent to all registered participants please note that there'll be no youth ministries this friday on saturday the church will hold a water baptism at 8 a.m at indian bay and we encourage all of you to come out to support the candidates on Saturday also, there will be um, missionettes from 3.30 to 5 p.m. at the Gome Methodist School grounds. Please send the girls 12 years and under to be a part of missionettes. On Friday, September 29th, the Men's Ministries Department will be hosting a married couple's line at La View Hotel from 7 p.m. The cost is $150 per couple and not $120 as we announced last week. $150 per couple. And if you're interested in attending, please see Men's Ministries President Deacon Lancelot Constance. Please note that the church will hold its final 24 hours of prayer and fasting on October 6th and 7th, 2023. We will meet for corporate prayer at church on Friday from 6 p.m. to midnight. We will not be meet at church on Saturday, but the fasting will continue up to 6 p.m. Please note that the church will be having a seminar on hearing God every Wednesday beginning October 11th to November 15, 2023, and all are invited to attend this seminar. Paui SVD District Convocation will be held on Sunday, October 15th under the theme, Expanding to Evangelism, Maturing to Discipleship. This will be held at the Annesville Sporting Complex from 9 a.m. The speaker for this event will be Reverend Carlton Edwards. The afternoon session will feature Christian Ed Department Consort, and it will begin at 2 p.m. Please bring along a special offering to assist in different expenses. The men, women, and youth ministries departments at GGT will be hosting an exhibition and concert on Independence Day, October 27, 2023, at the Gome Methodist School grounds. The exhibition will feature produce and various items from members like with businesses at Glad Tidings and will commence at 5 p.m. and the concert at 7 p.m. All are invited. Finally, the Beckway Pentecostal Church presents Independence Boat Ride and Beach Lime on Saturday, October 28, 2023 on the vessel MV Admiral Transport. The cost is $40 for others and Children under 12, $20. The boat will leave Kingston at 8.30 a.m. and at Beckway at 4 p.m. Lots of food, snacks, and drinks will be on sale. There will also be an, there will also be an inter-church sports competition. All are invited. Miss it. Blame yourself. These are all the announcements and will be posted on the notice board. All right, so please note that the, the water baptism is this week, Saturday. All right, this 8 a.m. at the and two candidates will be following the Lord in water baptism. There's Brother Williams and Brother Jackson. So could you two, both of you stand? It's good. Wonderful. And just, we'll be praying for you, and we look forward to, to those events. And we hope that to see you in our Wednesday, we're we'll talking about Raising Sons, and then on Friday, online, under the sheet, you're married, we want you to turn up under the, the, the thing, and uh, we, ch <laughs> we challenge you. <laughs> we challenge you. They say, keep the fire burning. Some of you need some air condition after. <laughs> Good, stand with me at this time. Join me in standing. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Um, remember that we're going to give you the, the credentials or the Zoom link would be in the chat. And if you're not a part of the chat, please, you can collect it from somebody this morning. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you.
the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. God bless you.